get a shot of measuring this over here. Yeah, those are pretty thick. This is what happened. This had this came with drum brakes, and now this has aftermarket disc brakes. And you had to put 12-inch wheels. These are off a newer Honda, and <clears throat> without the spacers, it was hitting the calipers, so the spacers had to go there. But they're a little too thick, so we need to take this much off. So this should be able to measure. Okay, so. Let's measure, so let's get that bump that comes out. Um, 11 64ths off. You think he wants it in fractions or? You better figure it out. I mean, I can do a mode, or 4.4 or millimeter, or point zero point one seven inches. I'll write it right here, let's write it right on the thing. Okay, so we're happy with that number. Oh, you, probably, you can go a drop more to be well, safe. Well, it's, it's also like the caliper. Like, there's space in there. Yeah, I, I guess. Do them all and see what the biggest, what your biggest number is. They should be relatively the same. Eighteen. I mean, it's point... Point eighteen was your biggest or point seven? Yeah, I, I mean that looks safe. If you did zero point one eight inches off. You know, right, I guess you could get a white one. Oh you wrote that on. Perfect. Let's take these to the shop. Cool. I got a project for you. Okay, what do you got? You think you can turn these down and you'll leave? Sure. So we need 0.18 taken off of these. These are spacers for a Honda four-wheeler. Okay. And they're made out of aluminum. All right. Clean this up a little bit and we'll We'll set it up in the lathe. Okay, sounds good. Gotta get my glasses on because I can't see. But, uh, I'm gonna grab the broken glasses. The dorky ones? Yeah, they look good. Uh. <clears throat> okay, Elmer Fudd. It allows you to use the, um, the side angle, the center angle that doesn't normally get used, usually you use the tips. So it allows you to get a little bit more use out of each cutter. So this cutter, here both of the long points are damaged already. How long does one of these last? Uh, they usually last quite a bit, depends on what you're doing. Most of the time they get damaged from just handling them and having them in a drawer and banging them against things. This is a, this bit here is actually made just for aluminum. It's got a very steep positive angle to it. See that right there? Very sharp angle. It 
Let me go look at that under the magnifying glass real quick. Make sure I got a good angle there. Nope, that one's chipped. You gotta use the opposite side. Hold on. Okay. We'll get that set up in the tool holder. This one right here. Take that out. Put this in. chips out of there so she sits in nice and tight we're going to plane that across that's the plan anyway make sure I've got enough room with this thing to get I'm all the way back now. So we want to take uh, 180 thousandths off of one face, right? Yep. All right. Let me get a uh, let me get a micrometer. Let's see what we got here. Five oh six. Yes. Very slight variation at probably the coating. Okay. All right, let's see if we can figure out how we're going to set this up in here. Let's get some light on. Let's get be able to reach the edge of that. We're going to be okay. Right there. We're going to be okay. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Set a indicator on here. Zero it out. Let's try twenty thousandths. See how she does. Hard to get aluminum chips to break. Best to just stay out of the way. Put this wharf out of here. Trust aluminum. Okay. It's a small lathe, so we're going to go easy on it, right?
and you're hitting the holes. finish. Another 20, right? things for uh, right-handed people. Seems like they're always backwards. About 45 and a half. Okay, our starting point. Another 20. That's 80 thou off, right? Together so far. Housekeeping here first. down. That's why you stay out of the way. Now, if that was steel, it would cut your hands right open. You wouldn't be able to pull it off like that. Okay, let's get back into the cut. Okay. 
a hundred. really a whole lot of a difference on, on a four-wheeler, is it? I mean, I guess it must be or you wouldn't be asking to have it done. Is there a clearance? Is, was there a clearance obstruction or something on the outside edge? Yeah, they have after, we put aftermarket tires back on this four-wheeler and okay. it also has aftermarket brakes on it as well. So uh -huh. the stock tires with the stock rims don't don't fit past the aftermarket brakes gotcha so they have to have these spacers but with the full spacer the lug nuts do not go on all the way andrew rides his stuff pretty rough so a bolt holding on by two threads probably isn't okay. the best idea so let me just take a measurement here I'm reading 505 and a half, which is what I read on the other one. I just had a 502 reading on here somewhere. Yeah, there's a 500. <laughs> so, uh, I think our accuracy is going to be plenty good, considering what they were when they, uh, they started out. So we're about 102. My dial indicator says 100. You want, you want 0.18, right? Yep. Okay. So we'll go another. We'll go another 20. I did check to clear that we're going to clear that jaw right there, we should be fine. You definitely don't want to run your cutter into the jaw. That would be good. Three more passes. Basically, yes. Yeah. something in a cupboard here. Well, that'll do. I think we might take the last two passes in, um, in tens.
to 10 thou cut. We're getting real close now. We got 340. There, there's some variation in these things. 334. That's what we want. Alright, we're gonna take a we're gonna take a ten towel cut. Back this up all the way. Parallax error in there looking at it from an angle. All right, here we go. I'm gonna put a little, watch your camera, I'm gonna put a little WD-40 on here. They claim that your train set is smoked. Just let it go. Bird's nest. Stringy bird's nest. Okay. Yeah, we're really close. See how close we are to the to the chuck? See it right there. It's close. Very close. See how much room we have. We are just gonna make it. Now let's Let's check things again and see where we're at. And we're really close right there. This is not a high precision part. Yeah, we're really close. Technically, if we were at 0.17, yeah, you're, you'd be okay. Because you're well within your you're well within your range. You're actually yeah. three three twenty four and a half right there. So we have to round it up to to point one eight. Now there's no sharp edges on it. See what we got going on here because this thing is jumping all over the place.
That's better. That we can live with. That we can live with. I think the screw is tightened down, down better than you. Yeah, that's better. That's much better. There you go. Awesome. Go we'll discs. Go give them a coat of paint and I think they'll be all set. All right, it's early the next morning. Let's grab these.
Bring him over to Andrews. See if the caliper clears. The rim wheel's still open. Oh, yeah, that's fine. There you go. Now we'll get some uh, mm. some lug grab on there. Yeah. They only just cleared the chuck on the snow leave. Oh, really? Yeah. Looks like it might need some more oil in it. Jeez, <laughs> that leaks a lot. Right? It doesn't leak when it's sitting flat. It's not like it was tilted that much. No. This side needs to be looked at. Well, don't park it like a uh, like a Jeep dealership yeah. on a pile of rocks. So what do you think of the uh, 8N, Sam? It's coming along. Yeah, it's looking good. Yeah, the whole back end is all back together again. We've got new uh, cups and bearings on the on the carrier. New bearings and cups on the outers. New seals. New brake hardware. New brake shoes. Um, these parts have all been sandblasted. This uh, pivot, this brake pivot was, was badly worn off. It was chunks out of it. And that had to be rebuilt back up again and turned on the lathe. But everything came apart nicely. Um, yeah, it looks like it's working smooth now. Yeah, the, um, the, hydraulic, the hydraulic unit, the pump itself was fine. And I didn't want to touch it because everything was working fine. It just wasn't holding pressure on the lift arm. So... I pulled the uh, piston out of this thing and the, 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 it has the old original style piston in it which had the metal rings and two of the three rings were stuck in the piston really hard so I went ahead and upgraded it. It was also badly pitted in the cylinder. So I went ahead and upgraded it to the new style which uses a single groove with um, a rubber o-ring with a backing, a leather backing ring behind it. So um, that's been upgraded. It shouldn't leak down anymore. I don't expect to have any problems. All this has been redone. All the pivots and the linkages have been redone in there. The, the adjustment here, this was all seized up. Everything was locked together, tight as can be. And it's all been released and everything, the pins slide out and everything now. So basically, it's, it's, it's good up to this point now. Yep. That's, that's where we're at. So last night I came out and I started stripping the sheet metal off. I've got the all the wiring off of the unit and, and this uh, dash is ready to come off. i got to pull the throttle rod out, disconnect the linkage and the steering wheel. And then uh, this can all go with the blast cabinet, thankfully. And we'll work our way up to this next joint, which is the engine. And we've got to split it open and do a clutch job on it as we move forward. Yeah. 
So that's it. That's where we're at. I mean, that's a good amount done. Quite a project. Yeah. This is going to be beautiful when it's restored. Oh, and uh, we're ordering the shaft for the back, the old prop shaft that had the original inch in it, uh, spline on it. And it's really beat up badly. Ooh. So rather than mess around with it, I just decided to order the new shaft that already has the modern uh, inch and three eighths six spline on it. So we'll put that in when it comes in the back. And then uh, we'll be all set to run a modern piece of equipment. We just need a uh, a clutch on it and overrunning clutch, and we'll be good to go. Awesome. So, all right, check back in with me, and I'll update you the next time you're around. Yeah, sounds good. Okay.